We've spent a considerable amount of time this semester talking about groups which, while they might look to be different on the surface, are actually identical. We've used the term isomorphic groups to describe such pairs of groups, and we've used uh, functions that we have called isomorphisms to detect that two groups are, in fact, structurally identical from an algebraic viewpoint. Today, we'd like to talk about groups which, while they share some of the same algebraic properties, they are not actually algebraically identical to one another. Here's an example. I have here a representation of a pair of groups. For now, I'd like you to concentrate on just the letters on this octagon, the A, B, C, and D, and notice that uh, we can look at this as a group that we are already somewhat familiar with. So let me show that, uh, let's see, I can rotate the octagon so that position A moves to position B, B moves to C, C moves to D. All right, there we go. So that would, that motion would uh, describe the permutation that sends A to B, B to C, C to D, and look what happened to D. Down here, D went, I have another, uh, another vertex labeled A over here, and that's exactly what happened to D. D went to, D went to A, so A goes to B, B to C, C to D, and then uh, D over to uh, D over to position A here, right? And then, well, this copy of A also went to, um, let's see, where'd it go? This copy of A also went to B, right? B went to C, C went to D, and D went to where A was. So in fact, if I, it might be convenient to, uh, instead of thinking of these as two separate vertices, maybe, maybe think of a line being drawn here. Think of it as line A and line B, right? Line C, and, uh, and we have line A moving to line B, line B moving to line C, C to D, D to A, right? With that one motion. And we could repeat that. So, uh, right, we could, we could take the permutation. That would be described by the cycle, um, a, B, C, D, A. If I apply that permutation twice, now I have A going to position C, right? C going to position A, line A if you like. Uh, B going to position, let's see, B went to position D, and uh, D went to position B and so on. Let's, uh, let's take a look at what we've got here. Whenever we permuted the vertices of the octagon so that uh, vertex one went to two, two went to three, and so on, uh, what we saw was that that prompted the uh, permutation of the letters uh, such that A would go to B, B went to C, C to D, D back to A. A second uh, second uh, rotation sent A to C, C to A, B to D, D to B. If we had done a third one, we would have seen that A went to D, D went to C, C went to B, and B went back to A. But here's the, here's the interesting part. When we did four rotations, let's, uh, let's go back and look at four rotations for just a moment. Um, so if we do four rotations, so, uh, so here's position A here. So there's one, two, three, four rotations. We have the identity map on the set of letters A, B, C, and D, right? A goes back to A, B to B, C to C, D to D, right? So we have two rotations of the, or two, uh, permutations of the elements one through eight, which correspond to the identity permutation of the letters A, B, C, and D. So we have the identity permutation of uh, 
of the rotation group, as well as R4, both being, uh, both being associated with the identity permutation on A, B, C, and D. And then we could continue. Five rotations is going to bring us back, back around to A, B, C, D. R6 is or uh, six rotations is going to be A to C, C to A, B to D, D to B, and then seven rotations, A to D, D to C, C to B, and then B to A. This suggests a function between the two groups, between the group of rotations of uh, the elements one through eight and the group of rotations uh, of the letters A, B, C, and D. So I'm going to call this function f, and it's going to take, let's see, so f's going to take uh, 1 to a, so the identity permutation for the rotation group to the identity permutation of the letter group, but it's also going to take uh, four rotations of the rotation group to the identity permutation of the letter group, and so on, right? I'm going to send one rotation to A, B, C, D, but I'm also going to send five rotations to A, B, C, D, and so on. Two rotations to A, C, C, A, and B, D, D, B. Three rotations to A, D, C, B. But three rotations is also going to, or seven rotations is also going to go to A, D, C, B. Let's see. We had uh, two rotations and six rotations both go to the AC and then BD uh, permutation over here. Well, let's see what is going on here. So if I, let's just take a couple of these. Let's say I take R2, so two rotations followed by, let's say, uh, let's say four rotations. I'm thinking of these as functions, so I'm going from right to left. Well, let's see, that gives me a total of six rotations, but six rotation, all right, so that's going to give me a total of six rotations. And if I looked at the corresponding uh, permutations in the letter group, let's see, R4 was the identity. Two rotations corresponded to uh, AC, BD. And whenever I combine those, let's see, what do I get? I get uh, A is going to go to C. Well, I'm going to get AC, BD, aren't I? I'm going to get, because this is the identity. So I'm going to get AC, BD. But uh, we'll check this out. AC, BD is also associated with R6. And so what we have here is that F of uh, R4 composed with F of R2 gave me F of R6. Or another way of looking at this, F of the composition of R4 and R2. Let's see, what was that? So that is F of R6. But that was F of uh, R4 composed with F of R2. This should look familiar. Right? F preserves the operation of the permutation group on eight elements. However, F is not an isomorphism. Right? F is not an isomorphism because F is not injective. It's not one to one. Right? We're sending multiple elements in the one group to the same element in the other. So this is a weaker version of isomorphism, right? 
And this is, this is called a homomorphism. F is called a homomorphism. Right, specifically, a homomorphism is simply a function which preserve a function between two groups, and uh, there are actually other types of homomorphisms. Uh, whenever we talk about other structures, so far we're just talking about groups. F is called a group homomorphism, provided that it's a function from one group to another. We'll uh, indicate operations here. function from one group to the other that preserves the operation on the domain group. So provided that f of uh, x star y is equal to f of x dot f of y. It's no different than the operation preservation uh, part of the definition of an isomorphism what's missing is the bijectivity. So a homomorphism is simply a function between two groups that preserves the operation. So in particular, an isomorphism would also be an example of a homomorphism because, well, isomorphisms preserve the operation between two groups. However, an isomorphism is stronger. It not only preserves the operation between the two groups, but it also preserves the size of the groups, the cardinality of the two groups. This is actually similar to something else that you might have seen in other classes, perhaps even whenever you were in grade school, whenever you were studying geometry, right? Whenever you were studying geometry, um, you would not have you would not have shown any or thought of any difference between two shapes which were identical in both shape and size even if you moved it around a little bit right so you, you wouldn't think of this triangle as being any different than uh, than this triangle if i turn this triangle a little bit it looks exactly like that triangle now they're not the same triangle one's here one's there there are two different triangles here, but in a very real sense, in a sense that would be uh, geometric, we think of these two objects as geometrically identical, right? And so I could define a function that takes this shape to this one, that takes this shape to this one. I could call that function f if you like. And functions in geometry which preserve both the shape and the size of the object are called isometries. Maybe you've heard of that, maybe you haven't. But F, as defined here, would be an example of an isometry, right? Same measure. On the other hand, there's a weaker version of an isometry uh, in geometry. It's not called an isometry, but one that preserves shape, but doesn't preserve size. So it preserves part of the uh, notions that a geometer would be interested in. And so I might have a function g that sends this shape to that one, sends this shape to that one. I'll call it g. Right. This would be called a dilation, right? A dilation is a function which preserves the shape of an object, but not necessarily the size. An isometry would be an example of a dilation. It preserves the shape, but it's stronger. It also preserves the size. And so the corresponding idea in algebra Right? I might have a couple of different groups which I can, well, let's see, if I, if I sent uh, one to A and two to B and so on, 
this function preserves the operation on this group, also preserves the number of elements in the group. This is an isomorphism. Right, on the other hand, what we saw just a moment ago is that if we took a copy of, you might have recognized that what we were working with there was isomorphic to Z8. And if we map both of these elements to A, both of these elements to B, and so on, what we have is a function which preserves the operation, but does not necessarily preserve, in this case does not preserve, the cardinality of the group, the size of the group. And this is what we've just defined to be a homomorphism. So a homomorphism in algebra is to an isomorphism as a dilation in geometry is to an isometry. Some of the properties uh, of the group are preserved, but not all. In fact, the most important aspect is preserved. The most important aspect for an algebraist, whenever they're studying groups, would be the operation on the group. So a homomorphism is exactly that type of a function that preserves the most important aspect of a group that an algebraist would be interested in. For homework, I'd like you to take our example just a little bit further. So what I showed you so here was our group, right? And we you know, sent one vertex one to vertex two, vertex two to three, and watched what watched how uh, the letters permuted whenever we did that. Well, we could go a little bit further because on the other side, I also have A's, B's, C's, and D's, as well as ones, twos, threes, and fours. And so instead of just looking at this copy of Z8, the numbers, against this copy of Z4, the letters, we could uh, actually look at Z8 cross Z2 and Z4 cross Z2. What I'd like you to do, let's go back to our whiteboard here. is I would like you to extend this homomorphism to the full Z8 cross Z2 group against the Z4 cross Z2 group. So if I think of uh, doing a flip and then doing a rotation, what does that correspond to in the letter permutation group? If I did a flip followed by two rotations, what does that correspond to? And so on. So I'd like you to complete this table. Right. So complete the uh, definition of the function. to uh, include all of uh, the Z8 cross Z2. Of course, we're using permutations here, but I think it's pretty clear that this uh, collection of permutations that we're describing is isomorphic to Z8 cross Z2. And, uh, and then do a couple of examples. Show specifically for a couple of examples that, uh, that the operation preservation 
property is satisfied. So uh, show, let's say, at least three examples. Give at least three examples that uh, show that the operation is preserved by F. Okay. And uh, if you'll do that, I'll do it as well for homework and uh, I'll post some answers and we can compare. Thank you for joining. Um, hope you found that enlightening and I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Until then, be safe, take care. I'll see you then.